to the standard and a newer type that has some faults. Now, like I said, this is a pretty crappy drawing of an older dog, but they have kind of parallel head planes. So you have the muzzle, and you have the top skull, and you have kind of a gentle stop, and you have a lip that isn't pendulous, but it's kind of round. And then you have a nice long neck and a laid back shoulder and a long upper arm. You have a, a correct tail set depending on who you're talking to, or carriage. The tail set should be a little lower. You have moderate angulation. My hawk here is too short. This bone and this bone, this bone's too long. But you have a little bit more leg than you do over there. A little bit more. The dog's front is underneath and supporting its body. You'll notice that it doesn't have any ears. <laughs> and that is a genetic flaw. <laughs> okay, this is kind of an exaggerated example of a, of a newer one. You see this brow that's yeah. sticking up in the air like a dolphin? <laughs> I showed a couple dogs like that today and a short muzzle, and you see the planes are way off. And then you see not really that straight a shoulder. This is actually a pretty good shoulder in today's ring, but you see that it's straighter. This is exaggerated also. And you see kind of a short upper arm, which places the dog's front too far forward. But sometimes they're way up here. You see that it's got short legs and a deep body and a really gay tail. And a really gay tail could be like that. And it would, that, if, if it were like that, this dog would have a big smile on its face. <laughs> this dog is a more serious dog. Um, you see this rear is extremely exaggerated. And you see this in every ring in the country, on, on many, many dogs. Does this rear match that front? No. So these bones, and that's what Karen was saying, these bones are supposed to be about equal. Um, this hawk is too short, even though we all love a short hawk. But a lot of our dogs are real exaggerated in there. And this tail set is too flat. This one's flat too. So it should be maybe more, a little bit more. My pen stopped. A little bit more like that. Out from out here, it's hard to see. Um, neither dog, oh, this dog has an ear, if you notice. Um, does anybody want to ask questions about these two dogs or draw something new on them? I can't hear you. Question on the tail. Question on the tail. I know that they both have a flat tail, and they both like have a little dip just before the tail starts. So, Okay, we talked about this the last one a lot. Yeah, Carriage is the way they hold it when they move. Exactly. Set is the way it's built into their body. That's kind of simple. But okay, yeah, Heather has a picture. Of a lot of handlers are trying to get them carry high. Well, a lot of handlers, when they stroke their tails up, we're yeah. doing that to get the dog to relax. Because stroking under a dog's tail relaxes its spine. Okay. So that's kind of why you're doing that. Um, I think that their tails are okay anywhere from there to there to even there. Okay, that's Heather's. Okay, Heather, show them the lines. Take the microphone, Heather. It's right over there. So this is a correct correctly sloped pelvis 
and that's where I think you're talking about where the tail comes off the back. So if you move this pelvis up, you're going to move that whole spine up, and then the tail has nowhere to go but up. And that's that's sit, not carriage. Right. Um, the tail, though, even on that pelvis, the tail could still go down. You're saying it has nowhere to go but up. If the pelvis is tipped up. Dueling speakers. Yes. <laughs> if, the, if the pelvis is tipped up, then this, the whole, um, I think this is the assembly. This of, right. part the of the spine right. has to be up also. Right, but that dog can't put its tail down. It can. Yeah, but it's but the way it comes off the back right. is going right. to be higher than than the standard calls for. Yes. So Heather, tell her what the stand say what the standard calls for, or Julie. Don't don't no. No. We're talking about this like it's The tail is car carried horizontally or slightly elevated and displays a characteristic lively merry action, particularly when the dog is on game. And can you apply that to what to the drawings? To Julie's drawings, or Julie can apply them. Have a little dip in front of it. That's kind of a funny way to explain it, but it should be. Yeah, a little tiny bit. Of a There's a slope to the pelvis. Yes. Most sprayers have a little bit of set. So if it's level, it's kind of hard to draw from over here. Level would be there. Get a hold of Trevor and I gotta go. Janine, Janine will, That's pretty much yeah. what the standard calls for. You did a lot for me. I really higher. appreciate it. I didn't do much. Yes, you did. I think and you did a lot. And it can be a little lower. They can carry their tails oh. like that. There's nothing wrong Are with you that. Sure? Why care about the yardstick? Can you say why it's a level? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. No, I'll you don't want it. Like that. Right. Although like most dogs, when they're really happy, can do that. I mean, or not happy, but when they're excited, or there's a bird, or they want to fight. That's Heather, when you'll see that, but you letter? don't want them naturally all the time. It's up there. To carry it like that. Does that answer your question? Are you talking about that or the cloth off of the I don't want the cloth off of the yardstick. Was it about the tail? Except read the breeze standard, it will tell you about it. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay, moving on to. Okay, you guys are doing your. your friend is leaving. So, Janae, you're up. <laughs> friend is leaving? She has to leave. Brenda, can you stay for just a here few she's minutes? Here. Just okay. stay for a few minutes. I don't have anybody to let my dogs out to potty. You, you don't have to leave. Your dogs can hold their feet. They're friends. <laughs> if they don't, you have a mess. Well, obviously, they're, they look different than, than what we've been used to seeing for a long, long time. Not so different from what they looked at, in, like, you know, a number of years ago. Um, one of the things is the European breeders and the Scandinavian breeders, Australian, whatever, they don't care about markings. They don't care if they have a white head or a big blaze or, you know, if they don't have a collar. It's, it's, it's just not important. Um, and I kind of like that. I, I, I kind of like not looking down a line and seeing, oh look, they, they all have the same markings. So for me it's kind of fun. It just makes it, you know, more interesting. Really? Um, so I, I think that's one thing, and I think as, as we saw today and we saw at the National, the judges are recognizing that they're here. And um, like I talked to uh, 
Doug Johnson, and he said, you know, he imports a lot of dogs in his breed, and he thinks that um, they have a place, you know, they, they're going to help diversify, you know, the pedigrees. For me, honestly, I haven't decided whether I think that that's totally true or not, because most of us, especially when you get old like me, we don't have a lot of time left to be able to bring it back together. And I know that if I breed an import to an import, I'm going to get more of the same types, you know, in, I mean, it's, I'm not going to have, oh, this puppy looks so much different from this, I'm going to, there's going to be more of the same. Um, when you do an outcross, completely from a foreign to an American dog, um, the first litter I did like that was kind of interesting. Um, I, I, the things that I wanted to change, uh, it got changed a little bit. I was really happy about that, but they were all kind of different. But I did get some pretty, and then I got some not so pretty. And it would have been, had I been able to, to keep any of those at that time, and I couldn't, it, I'm not sure where I would have gone with that. But I think that's what you have to decide if you want to have a foreign dog, is what's your reason. I personally love living with them. Um, I've never lived with dogs that I've trusted more or have made me laugh so much. And I have one dog, all the years I've had Springers, one of the dogs I have right now is my all-time favorite dog. He's my heart dog. I would do anything for him. And he's, I just told Julie, he's taught me so many things that other humans, that humans couldn't teach me. And he's, he's there for me. I've never, I've never had this kind of loyalty. And I'm sure that you've all had dogs that have been that way. But for me, um, this is, it's different. And I just adore them. They make me laugh. And this is a horrible thing to say, but I enjoy being with them more than my grandkids. Is that really bad? <laughs> but um, uh, they're 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 just they're just different, and I I just love being with them. So that's that's my reasoning. And I I thank Bonnie every day for not only getting me interested in this, but allowing me to keep that first dog that we imported yeah. together. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I just kind of wanted to do a question and answer thing if anybody had questions. I have a question. About the dogs. I looked at pictures of the Crocs winners and one of them was perfectly marked. Big white collar. Oh, I saw that. The hawk. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. Okay. So I think Mark is too bad. No. I think that they are even saying that they're seeing those people over there are starting to trim like we can. Right. And they're there's a lot of people that are really against that, and they've really voiced their concern about it, but it's just rampant now. And but that's the like same what? way, yeah. Well, they're, they're copying they're us. Hmm? They're, they're copying us. Yeah. They are. It's they like copying the them. Well, all I can say is that the winners were perfect. Well, that, maybe that was yeah. that judge. I know, and I thought about that. Right. Right. This is the first year I've seen that, too. But it's right. not been in past years. Right. Yeah. Perhaps this year we've seen it, okay. but not in past years. But I even had a guy that I imported a dog from England, and he even said, you know, hey, what kind of advice can you give me about ring prep? <laughs> he wanted me to tell him what I do, you know, to well, make my dogs. Best. But no, I'm not, but I'm just saying no, I thought I it was you, interesting. I mean, this I just, yeah, I think it's interesting that they are starting to do that when they've always in the past criticized it. Mm -hmm. And, they and it, this is an old time famous breeder. Um, wins a lot over there. Had the top winning dog in the country for a number of years. So. But you don't have to be a professional handler in those countries to win. They do a lot more selling of their own dogs. And, you don't have and it's to more casual, too. You just have to be, at least try as good. And but it's more prevalent here. But the owner-handler thing has lowered the bar. Mm -hmm. Used to be, when you and I played, we were going to win. We had to get to be as good or better than most handlers, and we were better than most. And a lot of us are. Them. Now, oh, you don't have, have to be that good. You can go compete in one thing and own a hand. And they don't strive to be good. 
But that's, uh, no, I don't need to get off the subject. I was just well, I remember years ago, is, is, is there happen. still the, um, there was a, like a, for PHA, there was a owner, there was OHA, there was, there was, mm -hmm. is that still around? I don't know. I don't either. I have been. <laughs> you have one with your dogs here. You don't have to have, if you have a good dog in this country, you present it adequately and you groom it, you will eventually lose it. What it should be about in either country is the breed standard. Right. The dogs need to be fitting the breed standard, whether they're spotted or whether they're That's solid true. color. It really doesn't matter what color they are. It does matter whether their shoulders are in the right place, whether they have a good length of upper arm, whether they move in a fluid But it manner. does do some. And Perhaps. prettiness, beauty is always going to attract. In the eye of the beholder. Well, I'm just saying, you're right. Because I, I think, <coughs> to me, I'm These sorry. are also beautiful. I think that dog's beautiful. I think all of them are, really. Um, it's just not what we're used to. It's harder to show them. Yeah. So and all of them are not beautiful. Any more no. than all of our dogs. Oh, no. Oh, I thought you said all of them. No, I think no. our breed standard in a way is confusing from what we read and then what we see. We see mark we read that we read that markings don't matter. But you go to any dog show and you go, how come they all look the same? And they're all oh, look at the perfect blaze and the perfect collar. So that's where it's really confusing. And it used to be in the past, you put open coated dogs in, they would just why waste your money? And to me that's where it's really confusing. Our breed standard says one thing, but yet what you see is different. And I think that that's what Brenda hasn't been breeding that much recently, but you and Janae have had lots of beautiful champion American dogs. So uh, my question is, why did you go for a foreign dog? What was lacking in American dogs? Was that it? Or did Not you really. want something different? Or I don't really breed as much as I did before. So, you know, I just, I like the way they look. I was very curious to see how they would all be to live with and differences in temperament and I, all four of the dogs that I've imported are all different. They're all very different. The only similarity they have, and we've talked about this, all of us, is they're more interested in scenting things or in their environment. They're, they're in tune with nature more than an American dog. It's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. They don't listen to, he doesn't listen to me when he's busy sniffing around, he's just, you oh, let him loose and he is just into that environment. And it's like a nature thing with him. It's, you know, and he's... Oh, oh, oh. What is that? What is that? Oh, it's a, it's a jelly. They left. You <laughs> scared them away. The talkers are exactly like that. They'll wear off the bottom to their ears. And I mean, this time. No. Try around the first They sent on sent on. They cannot to come off of that. Right. All they want to do is wrap all around. That's and what because they're lower than these dogs. Right. It's hard to. But every, but it's they, like they, everything they do, it's like that it's all about yeah, scenting and, and, and an instinct okay. thing. It's weird. And they it, can it's pick very up. different. They can pick up scents. Don't you notice that? They can pick up scents. He's what? Well, why did we go from our founding appearance to what we have now? Well, we used to have. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Good, yeah. good answer. Brenda, could you speak to what we talked about yesterday about when you saw the changes? and answer her question where we went from the standard to a typey dog to a fancy dog you were very eloquent about that yesterday i don't even remember what i said that was yesterday um, no, I don't drink. she was driving that's I'm scary sure. no I, I i think that yeah we went from a dog that was a real sporting dog and you know we didn't they weren't fancy. Right? Well, you were talked about the Yankee Patriot dog being the transition yeah, dog. Yeah, I thought that was kind of a transition dog. I mean, he started, that was, I thought he was a really cool looking dog. And he's, that's, I, I think a little, got, you can remember okay. these dogs. I'm, no? So he was, you're not that old. So uh, <laughs> I think he was a little bit fancier and then it just kept going. I 
trying to talk Megan into maybe we could put together some type of thing by year for the last 50 years or whatever with, with pedigree and a picture of the dog just to see Heather's going to try to pull you up one right um, now. But yeah, I, I think when we went from the look of the purposeful dog to the fancier dog, I think that's when we started changing a lot of things. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think that you can have a purposeful dog for this thing. Oh, I, I agree I with that. No, I agree with that. But some of them, some of the things that we lost, I think, when we went to fancy, were the abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a prime example. I'm a diabetic, and one of my dogs is very in tune to where my glucose levels are. And if he thinks that I'm dropping, he'll come up, he'll sniff around my face three times, never fails, three times, then bury his nose right here at my mouth. And if there's a problem, he lets me know. He was never trained for this. It's just, and my other two dogs, it's the same way. I mean, just like the English cocker. Probably. But um, I, I think that, you know, I think when we talk about purposeful, a lot of it is, is that ability. And, and our dogs have smaller noses now overall than they did before. And I think that, you know, and, and you see these guys with the bigger noses, they flare their nostrils a lot more. So I think to answer your, your question is that Julie Gauso, she really wanted them, well, they, she wanted them to be without ticking and to be. The Sheltie. No, oh, the English Cocker. But no, he wanted the Shelties. Oh, the Shelties. They were fluffy little animals. He didn't know they were. But so it I took judges to put her. Well, uh, yeah, she was a very influential yeah. person. Yeah. I'm going now. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. Um, so I think that, you know, there's Yankee yeah. Patriots page, um, pedigree up on the screen. You guys can get up and look at it. It's an old Canark bitch bred to a Sally Lynn dog, isn't it? Well, look how close Rothstein Hunter is. How close what? How close up Rothstein Hunter is in that pedigree. Right. That, that's amazing. You know, that was an import. It was? Yes. Okay. Is yes. it one of, is well, it they were all one of the ones that's really Well, I know, but you got Noah Lotus Hufty Hufty, grand dam of the Yeah. I mean, that was an American dog. That was a very American looking dog. He could show that, could show that dog today. Speak up, Gay, so this picture up. Yeah. Yeah. And he can't and he's a very good dog. Yeah. Mine were can art, old can arts. Yeah. So ask your Bonnie, question, Bonnie, can you, you... know, our breed is basically one of the few, few breeds that are split three ways. You know, you have the European, you know, English, you have the American spring, and then you have the field side. Come See, I don't think thing. that this dog, I mean, I have no idea. If, he had no ticking, if he didn't have any ticking and he was like a black and white really, dog with a big white collar. You don't see the splitness, but yet we're together, but we split. Oh, wait. Well, you never see a field dog in a show. You basically never see a show dog in a field. Field dogs are a lot different. They're really oh, different. different. I know. Yeah. But see, they're, 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 looking for, they're both looking for different purposes in the dog. But his purpose is the same as an American Springer. Yeah, but not the field dog. Well, the dogs behind him do hunt. on the top. And in Europe, it's a requirement. In a lot of the countries, they I have to that. pass a basic hunting. Yeah, I know that. Just to be a champion. I think they should have to do that here too. No. Get a junior hunter now? No, I mean, the reason I think we need to keep the, the aptitude and the instinct there is like even for the performance stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. True. That helps. True. <laughs> True. I, I think that the, I've always wanted to do a champion. Haven't been able to do it because I'm stinking trained. But, because um, I've had dogs that have had the instinct, but, I did something wrong. 
But anyway, I think that that has to do with the workability. It's what they're bred for. And I think a dog that can do that, you have a more well-rounded mentally dog. Mentally, I think it's... it's but a hunting dog is different than a field, a field trial, trial champion dog. I'm not, the, I, I'm not the talking level about is, a field trial oh, Do you mean champion? like a junior hunter or a... There's right. a lot of people that yeah. do that. Yeah. Yes. Right. But yes. not but a field trial dog. That that totally instinct different. is important to keep in the breed. In herding dogs, they all herd you. I don't, you know, they, that seems to be very strong. But there aren't all, all American show dogs are not in herds. No, but lots of them. Lots of them. No, but this day and age, you know, it's hard to even find a place to go train a dog to yeah, do any kind of work. That's true. But there's set work now. You know, that's where this breed would really excel, I think. Stuff like that. Yeah, that's a big breed for, I'm sorry, keep talking, but drug body. Yes. Yes. I would say that Gary and I bred a dog that was a bomb detection dog at the Portland Airport. Really? Yeah. She was great. great. Yeah, she was great. She was really, and they, when she retired, they had a hard time replacing her. Part of it, it was her size. You know, part of the reason they like Springers is their size, because they can get in where Shepherds and Labs can't. They can get in, right, right. yeah, to luggage areas. Right. Many years ago, there was a, we were doing our fun day at Lady. Yeah. And she had a Springer that was her drug detection dog. Yeah. They're big for that. Yeah. It almost got killed. Yeah. She put it in a house and a pit bull almost got it. They, she's saying that it went into a house and a snake almost got it and it <laughs> ran out and almost got hit by a car. But yeah, with a black and white, um, more imported Springer, many years ago. Many years ago. Well, even American dogs, they still have that great aptitude. Yeah, stuff. they do. Because I've trained tracking dogs. Julie and I used to go all the time. Train tracking dog. I want to try and train this dog. He should be great at it. Yeah. Lungs are in shelters. You're what? Lungs, there's no shelters. <laughs> so, do you guys have any other questions? Megan, do you have any questions? Any questions? Yeah. I mean, I wanted to ask Karen a couple things. Yeah. I can get Bonnie's opinion, do you think? There's a too slow of a speed. Like, is there a point where if a spring, you're judging a springer's going around the ring that it's like, that is too slow. We talk about they're not supposed to be African and Irish shutters or shepherds. Like, today's judge where, wanted us to go slow. Whoa. And if you went too fast, she got many. Yeah. 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 And it's all about the foot timing yeah, for me and the balance on the dog. And if it has beautiful foot timing, it doesn't need to go fast. It's beautiful. You know, that's what I like to see. Me too. They don't, I don't like a dog that races around the right. ring and just, you don't have that foot timing there. It's, there's no cadence. You know, you, can, you can't even really see the reach and drive. You know, and that's something that needs to be brought up about these dogs. The dogs in England, if you read the standard, I have it over there, the FCI standard, yeah. that movement is completely, the way they describe it is the Springer is, his movement is completely his own. He's the only dog that moves this way. And they move with reach from the shoulder blade. Yes. Yes. Okay, they don't move that way from here. The, mo the majority of dogs move from the elbow. Yes. And they move forward in their elbow. And you watch them from the side, and if they don't have that balance, it's, it's wrong, you know? And, and even if you read the AKC standard, you, it, she took it away. Oh, she still has oh. it here. Yeah, it's still she, on. come here, whoa. It, it describes the same movement, which I thought was interesting, that we just don't follow that. And I don't know if, I, oh. It says, and this is interesting, elbows, have free action from the shoulders, and the legs show no tendency to cross or interfere. Okay, so free action from the shoulders, the elbows, okay, so it's supposed to extend. And you can really see a lot of pictures, the judges Ed has a lot of pictures about that. 
Yes. And you see pit movement pictures of these dogs in Australia and England, and you can totally see it. You know, they're completely... The dog, I think the bitch that won at Crufts was two years ago, moved that way. And Andrew Grace even mentioned, you know, he judged the bitch once, and he mentioned that. She has that correct Springer movement that's even... It's getting lost. It's even, though. even over there, they're losing it a little bit. Well, and I think that it, it that you're correct. I mean, we see a lot of dogs that move from the elbow, and they, they don't, don't open the shoulder. They, they don't open the shoulder. They, they, and a lot of it is because they can't. And if you go back to Julie's drawing, it, once you raise that scapula to a less than, per, you know, great angle, the angle that it's supposed to be at, that upper arm collides with it, and you can't get a shoulder that opens. Do you understand what I'm saying? Very correct, curious. correct. And a but lot they, of dogs in our, our brain, and it's very cute. They do this. Yes, right. And that's not an open shoulder no. or an open elbow. But we show our dogs. Correct. Like this. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, that's all they do. Right. So, but you're right. Yeah. So I think that we, we saw several dogs today that may be based on the way they were shown, but they opened their shoulder effortlessly. Your bitch is one. She just opens it effortlessly. She, there's no work to it. Right. And it's, it's really beautiful to watch, and that is what we have lost. Yeah. And I think that's part of the shoulder placement is a huge piece of that. And I wanted to also address the other um, question about how do, we, how do we get where we are from these dogs. Well, I think that's Karen addressed that. Who, oh, I she wants you to yeah. go back and like not care how they're marked. Let's move to a, yeah. to a dog that is not a gas out style of Sally Lynn, perfectly marked dog. And I think we're starting to see that the longer we get The away progression. From we're starting to see a progression away from that. And these dogs are helping us do that. And you know, I'm glad to see we're seeing more open coated dogs in the ring. Right. Because that's typically, I mean, it doesn't, oh, it's not perfectly marked. There's no such thing as markings in our breed. But you well, I wish we could have talked to Bonnie Threatful and get some input from her. She was just here. Because, I know, she had to go to a group. But it, oh. it would have been interesting to hear her comments. What did she see in these dogs? Right. It's it would be interesting to me. I would be interesting to because me I, as well. Because that was a total yeah. surprise to me. I can tell you. You can? Yeah. She liked their roundness. Their what? Roundness. Oh, say more about that. Roundness? Round. She likes, she wants spaniels to be round. All of them. Round in the rib? Round in the rib. Round. She <laughs> side. Round. 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 Like an but, English cocker, yes, but only bigger. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that would be my guess. Okay. And she, I know that she, the other breed just she <laughs> a lot. She wants bone to support her. Um, yeah. Yeah. She hates, she hates little fine things. Little fine <laughs> thing. Okay. Right. And she did that today. I mean, I think that she that was that 